Hello YouTube! I'm Nye from the Finale Guitar Shop in Sheffield and you join me on Folk Friend, your one-stop shop for Celtic backing guitar tutorials. In today's video I am going to be responding to a request from one of my viewers. Um, about three weeks ago now I had a request for a guide to the style of Titch Richardson, an absolutely fantastic Shetland style um, guitar player who found fame with Boys of the Loch playing in the 1980s and late 70s. Um, so it's taken me a little while to get around to this one and sorry about the delay on that but here is my video guide to how you can get the sound of Titch Richardson's playing style. Before we get into this video I'd just like to let you know that there is a big like button down there and it really wants your click. If you go and press it right now you'll really help the channel out because YouTube show my videos to more people if you do. Uh, really helps me and it makes the like button happy so go and click it right now please. You can also click the subscribe button while you're there and you'll get a free Celtic guitar tutorial from me every Saturday. I'd just like to say a huge thank you to uh, Titch's brother Dave who I've been in contact with via email. Um, he's helped me out with um, the pictures for the thumbnail for this video. He's told me lots of great things about when they were playing together in Boys of the Loch and a bit about the history of the band. And he also told me a really great story about a gig they did once where Peary Willie Johnson, who I've talked about in previous video up in the corner there, and who has a very similar playing style to Titch, um, came with them on tour as a, a guest. Um, and they did a gig in Lerick in uh, Shetland where it was so snowy that the day after the gig they actually used their instrument cases as sledges in order to get to a session. So uh, thank you very much to Dave for um, encouraging me to make this video and also to Kevin from the band for putting me in touch with Dave in the first place as well. So what we'll do, we're going to have a little look at a clip of Titch playing with Ali Bain. Uh, this is available on YouTube, I've linked the full clip in the description down below as well. And then I'm going to go through and show you the trademark strumming style, some of his chord choices and how you can take the uh, music theory that he's using and apply it in your own playing to get loads of similar sounding chord progressions in other keys. <laughs> So the strumming pattern that Titch is using there is something like this. That is more or less the La Pompe style which via Willie Johnson came originally from Django Reinhardt because Peary Willie Johnson um, also lived in the Shetland Isles and he was hearing um, things on American radio broadcasts which they were able to pick up there. Um, and one of the things that was getting played there was Gypsy Jazz and Django Reinhardt with his trademark <laughs> trademark strumming style. And so that has very much kind of influenced Peary Willy and then a whole generation of Shetland players like Titch Richardson. So in order to get that pattern, what we're going to do is we're going to start out using these kind of closed hand chord shapes. And these are shapes like this, where your hand is very much up flat against the neck, which is... Uh, generally frowned upon as kind of poor technique, but it's the kind of part of the uh, the style. So we're going to loop our thumbs around the back and put that on the fifth fret of the bottom string. And then we're going to bar the top two strings with the index finger, put the middle finger on the sixth fret of the G string, and the ring finger on the seventh fret of the D string. And that is going to give you this, which is a really nice A major chord. The reason this is a good shape for this style is that if you slacken that left hand you'll instantly mute it because you're holding down all the strings apart from the open A string and you're going to let your thumb just gently rest on that so that's muted anyway. So I can choose to mute my note or not by how much I let that left hand go. So my right hand can just be doing a very simple down 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 motion. And what we're going to do on that chord is we're going to pluck the bottom string and then we're going to pluck the others. And then, as soon as I've plucked the others, I just let go slightly with that hand, so... Like that. The other thing that you see Titch doing sometimes in this video is just filling in the up for a little bit of variation, so... That kind of thing. 
So what I'm doing there, if you think down, 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 in between each of those downs, your hand is actually coming back up again in order to be ready for the next down. So what you do is you just let that up, swoop a little bit lower so it hits the top couple of strings very gently as it comes back up. So that you get down, down, up, down, down, up. If you look at my right hand as I'm doing this as well, it's like a little circle that I'm drawing with my pick. And it's kind of like my wrist is sort of bouncing. You know, you want your whole arm very soft and it's mainly a wrist movement more than an arm movement. Something like that. Titch actually doesn't really fill in very many of those upstrokes. If you watch him in this clip, you know, he's really just um, playing down, 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 down and just very occasionally for a little bit of a variation he'll throw in the odd up here and there. The next thing that you're going to want is this kind of root fifth, root fifth, root fifth, bass line thing that is going on. So when you start on your chord one, in this case it's a tune in the key of A, so your chord one is A, um, you want a nice little root fifth bass line under it and the way that you get that conveniently in the key of A is just to take your thumb off. go through the first A part that you saw Titch play in the uh, clip there. Here is the first set of chords that he plays. It's A with my bass line, then A to this shape which is an F sharp 7, and then down to this shape which is a B7. And then to this shape, which is an E7, like that. And for that one you can leave the bottom string in because it's an E chord and your bottom string and your top string are both E, so both of those will sound nice on it. So let's just unpack that chord progression a little bit. If you're in the key of A major, or A Ionian, um, your main chord is A major, obviously, and your other options are B minor, C sharp minor, D major, E major, F sharp minor, potentially G sharp diminished, but we'll probably avoid that one because folkies don't like the sound of diminished chords very much. Um, those are the options that you can make out of the notes of an A major scale. And if you don't know what I mean by that, then go and check out my music theory guide video, which is linked in the corner of the screen right now. There's two parts to that, and that'll tell you everything you need to know about the modes and everything you need to know about why certain chords fit with those. The other thing is here as well, this device, the mode wheel, is really handy. It shows you all the chords that fit with a tune in any key, and it shows you how the modes relate to one another. So if you are trying to get your head around this stuff, this is a really useful tool for that, and you can buy them on the Folk Friends shop, which is linked in the card now. So those are the options that you'd expect. However, if we look back at our chord progression again, um, a lot of these chords are not there, and there's some other things going on. So it goes from A, it goes to F sharp, and we have a chord here that should be F sharp minor. However, instead in this progression we've got F sharp 7. And that is a trick which is borrowed from um, swing and jazz and those kind of genres, um, a trick involving dominant chords. The trick is this, any time you've got a chord progression where one chord is followed by another chord whose root note is a fifth below the first chords, um, then you can convert that first chord to a seven chord, no matter whether that first chord was a major or a minor before it can become a seven chord, and that will make it want to resolve into the chord that follows it, because any time you hear a dominant seven chord, your ear wants it to resolve down a fifth. Now that's quite a lot of layers all at once, um, let's just go through all of those again. So we've got an F sharp chord, We'll just talk about the root notes for now, it doesn't matter what types of chords these are. Followed by a B chord. Because F sharp, if we count backwards through the alphabet, F, E, D, C, B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Because that is down a fifth, 
I can swap my F sharp minor to be an F sharp 7 and that will make my ear want to hear the chord from within the scale whose root note is a fifth below. So that takes me from there round to what would be a B minor chord. Now the chord that follows the B chord is going to be chord 5 which is an E chord and I've talked loads in my previous videos about the fact that on every seventh foot tap you always get chord 5. So we've got B and it's being followed by E and if you count back from B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, B, A, G, F, E. So that is resolving down a fifth as well. So that means that this B chord can also become a 7 chord and that's how you end up with what Titch plays there. So instead of a progression which is um, a traditional sounding progression, so A major, F sharp minor, B minor, E, and then back to A, instead you end up with a whole little line of dominant chords which is uh, A major, F sharp 7, B7, E7. So within that progression, chord 1 obviously is chord 1, chord 6 is chord 1's related minor, because if we look on our mode wheel, there's chord 1, and 2 below it is chord 6, F sharp minor. Then we've got chord 2, which is B minor. B minor can also work as a substitute for chord 1. The reason for that is that any time you've been playing chord 1 for a bit, you can play chord 4 instead. And chord 4 is related to chord 2, therefore that means that by extension you can play chord 2 instead of chord 1 as well. And if all of this is a bit confusing for you, you can find a really clear and simple guide to it in my first book, Backing Guitar Techniques for Traditional Celtic Music, which is available both in paperback and ebook format in the corner of the screen right now. So what that means is we've got chord 1, chord 6, which is a substitute for chord 1, then chord 2, which is a substitute for chord 1, and then chord 5, because it's the 7th foot tap. So that is a really good chord progression for folk tunes in major keys where there's no clear-cut chord 4 sections. Through the second line of the A part, Titch plays the following. Something like that. The first thing he's doing there is adding a nice little bass run-in to the A chord, so... And he also does a thing a few times in this clip where he'll play the uh, the E, the fifth note for the A chord, by just moving his ring finger onto the seventh fret of the A string so that he can either do as his bass line or like that. So in this one he's doing something like that. The next thing he does is he does um, basically the 1, 6, 2, 5, 1 chord progression again, but this time the same up to there, but this time instead of playing the B minor chord here, he's going to play an inversion of the E7 chord. So if you think about an E7 chord like that, your notes within um, a 7 chord are the root, the major 3rd, the 5th and the flattened 7th. Root, major 3rd, 5th flat and seventh. You can invert that chord which means that at the bottom of it you put one of the notes which isn't the root note. So if I play um, my E7 shape but I move my ring finger onto the seventh fret of the bottom string, I've got an E7 shape inverted so that the B is at the bottom. So we call that E7 over B, kind of written like a fraction. So that sounds like sounds a bit like a B minor, it's got a B in the bass, but it also wants to go to E7, um, and it just sounds really cool. So he's going like that, instead of going something like that. We then get into the B part. In the B part, um, the first half of it is actually the same chord progression as the first half of the A part. 
In the second half, he does a really cool chromatic run-up, which is borrowed directly from Django Reinhardt. I've talked about a very similar chromatic run-up in my guide to using Django chords in folk music, which you can find linked in the corner. Um, Titch uses a slightly different fingering of the same kind of technique, and I imagine that this has kind of been passed down from Django to Peary Willie and then on to the kind of Shetland guitar style in general. So I'll just run you through this chromatic run up and then I'll tell you quickly um, a little bit about why that actually works. We're starting on our A chord like this, then we're going up to um, that second inversion of an E7 chord which I showed you before, so E7 over a B note. And then if you slide that shape up one, take your middle finger off and convert the index finger into a little mini bar so that that is barring the D, uh, G and B strings on the 6th fret. You get that, which is basically the first inversion of an A flat chord, and that runs into the first inversion of an A chord. It's actually the first inversion of an A chord with the 13th added, so you could call it A add 13 over a uh, C sharp, or alternatively, you could just call it kind of an A chord. <laughs> That's probably easier. So all together there, we've got A, E7 over B, a kind of inverted A flat, and then a kind of inverted A. And then you can do something like Something like that to uh, finish it off, you know, or you could do um, any of the other kind of stock ending phrases for your chord five section, as in any of the previous loops. That little chromatic run is a really, really nice creative option, and it works because the first chord is A, the second chord is um, actually chord five, but it sounds a bit like B minor, so it works okay as a substitute for A. The third chord really shouldn't be there, but it works okay because, you know, it's an A-flat chord. Uh, you may be thinking A-flat is very clearly not in the key of A, but it works because then it slides up one semitone and resolves to be an A chord, which fixes it. So in jazz territory, if you've got any chord that you want to hit um, on an important part of the tune, if just before that chord you play a chord which is a semitone either side of it and then slide into the chord, that'll always sound like a cool setup for the chord. Um. So the main things you can take away from this are number one, if you've got um, a big long chord one section and you want to make it sound like the Shetland style, then put a 16251 in it and convert each of the chords to be dominant chords. Another classic um, Titch style thing that you can use is instead of playing chord 2, play the second inversion of chord 5. So you can do this in any key. If you were in G major, G would be like that. Chord 2 should be A minor. Chord 5 is going to be um, D7. And I could play that instead of chord 2, which is the second inversion of D7. Another really cool thing that we've learned is that any time you've got a big chord one block you can throw in one of these little chromatic um, links using like that. Then either you can go from chord 2 to chord 5 to finish it off, or you can go from chord 4 to chord 5 which would finish like um, something like that. So either of those would work really nicely. And the last thing we've learned is that if you're going into any chord, think about whether you can slide into it by just shifting the shape one fret either side before you get to that chord, and that'll give you a real nice kind of classic jazz kind of sound, which is one of the sort of trademarks of the Shetland style. So... Something like that if you were going to chord four, for example, or... Something like that if you were doing chord one, etc, etc. So that's it for this video. There's loads more I could say about Titch Richardson's style. I will hopefully be coming back to have a look at some more of his things in the future because he's a really interesting player. 
Um, thanks again very much to Kevin and Dave from Boys of the Loch. Do go and check out their music, it's absolutely fantastic. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the little like button, hit the subscribe and the bell next to it. You'll get a free tutorial from me every week. And I will be back, as always, next weekend with lots more Celtic guitar tips.